folks, Dave here. A few months ago, Good AAA sent me this power bank here. This is a solar charging power bank. It has a 1.3 watt solar panel on it, and I became rather fond of it, and I use it for a lot of different things around here in the shop. Now, the solar panel in this model is good for what I would call a trickle charge. It's about 1.3 watts. This power bank can be kept anywhere there's ambient light, and it will charge a slow trickle charge. Even under the workbench light, this power bank here is actually trying to charge. It's not going to be getting much of a charge right now, but even in a window with ambient sunlight, a single 1.3 watt solar panel will charge a power bank. It's just really slow. A slow charge is better than no charge. Now, the only thing better than a solar panel is more solar panels. And this power bank is another model that Good AAA sent to me. And it's quite similar to the last one in appearance and overall design. It has some differences. But the best thing is it has a ton of extra solar panels built into it. I think it's quite clever. And they just fold out like that. And these are all 1.3 watt solar panels. Since there's five, you have over five watts of charging, potentially. It does take up a little bit of space, but for the amount of solar charging you're getting, these are really thin, they fold away. On the back of the power bank, it shows the specifications of the solar panels. You can see they put out 0.26 amps, or 260 milliamps each, at about five volts. Now, of course, that's at a certain sunlight intensity, so you can't expect five watts sitting in a window. Most likely you'll get a couple of watts or something like that. However, when you have five solar panels in parallel like this, that's actually a good amount of charging, and I think it's uh, I think it's worth the effort. I can tell that these solar panels are in parallel because when I open up the first leaf, the charging light gets brighter. Let's just take a quick look at the features on the power bank, and then uh, let's see if we can test the solar charging. It's a good thing that this power bank still has a old-style USB-A port in it. Right now I'm using that output to charge the camera phone that is recording this video. It's an older phone, so it's only charging at 880 milliamps, so not very much power. So this USB power bank is supposed to put out about 3 amps. So I happen to have this programmable load tester. The last one I had blew up and burned out. They're a little pricey, but they're extremely useful for all sorts of things. Here I'm going to use it to test the USB output on this power bank. Let's just turn it up. It is turned on. It is plugged into the USB-C, and I'm just turning up the load. So we'll just try to see if we can hit 2 amps, which would be, you know, that'd be ordinary 2.1 amp USB charging. So there's 2 amps right there. 2.3 amps, and let's see if we can hit 3 amps. There it is. So yeah, this thing will do 3 amps, like it says on the tin. There's 3 amps, actually a little over 3 amps. Now when you're drawing the full amount of power from a USB system, you do expect voltage drop. If you look at the wire coming out, that's very thin for 3 amps. So really, 3 amps is reasonable. It does work. And I would think 2 amps for me would be enough. Some of my phones only charge at 1 amp, so the fact it can do 3 amps is more than good enough for me. I mean, that's almost 15 watts coming out. 2 amps would be a lot more reasonable. It's about 10 watts. So apparently it doesn't have any issue at all delivering the rating that it specifies right on the side of the case. Now I'm also testing the mini USB output, which is a older version of USB, but it's still very common. And I just want to see how many amps I can get from that. Well, I got way over 3 amps there. You saw that go up. So 3 amps, this power bank will easily deliver 3 amps. It actually delivers in excess of 3 amps. And again, you can see the voltage drops a little bit. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. At about 2 amps, it's a even 5 volts, which is just fine. At 2.5 amps, the power bank can stay at 5 volts without any problem at all, so the voltage doesn't drop. While running the 2.5 amps from the USB-C port, I'm also running this LED light from the USB-A port. I'm just going to do this as a bench test to make sure it can handle the power output over a long period of time. So I'm going to test the solar charging aspect of this power bank. Because it has a 1.3 watt solar panel times 5, you would expect about 5 watts of charge. Now let's just estimate some numbers here. The total capacity of this power bank is 136 watt hours. If you were getting 5 watts, that would take a long time to charge. If you run it down 100 watts, that's 20 hours in the sun. It's totally reasonable to expect the solar panels to not take on the full duties of charging. I would feel comfortable saying that in one day of pretty good sun exposure, you should be able to get 20 to 40 watt hours into this power bank. If you're out in the field, you're, if you're camping, you're hiking, 20 to 40 watt hours into a power bank like this that's enough to charge your phone or at least give it a boost. So the fact that they put so many solar panels on this power bank was not a waste of effort, I don't think. The way the solar panels are attached to this unit is through the snap. And it's relatively secure. Now you can see that the solar panels do double, roughly double the thickness. But I think that if you really want solar charging and you don't want to carry a separate solar panel, that would be okay. It certainly doesn't bother me. 
This power bank has wireless charging, but I don't have a single wireless charging phone to test it with. It does have a light that comes on here to indicate the wireless charging is active though. These cables are pretty neat. Um, I wish they were about twice as long, but they get the job done. These are for charging phones or whatever gadgets you have. So there's the flashlight, and it's quite bright. I'm not going to aim it straight at the camera. It's two LEDs with a focusing lens, and it is quite bright. So as a flashlight, this absolutely does the job. At this point, I'm just running the power bank down so I can give the solar charging feature a good test. One of the problems with a solar power bank is you can't really put this case in the sun on a hot summer day and bake it and expect good results. The reality is this has a lithium battery in it, and you don't want to get that hot. And in fact, it clearly states in the manual of both power banks, including this one, that you should not leave it in the sun to get hot, which is kind of ironic because it's a solar power bank. This type of power bank here, I would not actually put this directly out in the sun on a hot summer day. What I would do is put it in a window with indirect sun. That's good enough. This power bank, though, you have some different options. Because the solar panels unfold, you can actually wrap this power bank here in a white towel and put it out in the sun, and you would be able to leave it there for a lot longer. So if you really care about solar charging and you don't want to carry a separate solar panel, I think this power bank is actually quite compelling. Okay, so as a test, I ran this power bank down for a while, then I threw it out in the sun on a table. I didn't make any special effort to angle it at the sun or anything like that. I just threw it on a table out in the early morning sun and let it do its thing, and it charged right back up. Of course, it's quite a slow charge. So what I can't do is check the voltage of the battery. All that I have is these lights as a reference. So it doesn't tell me the voltage or anything, but it's back up to four bars now, and I ran it down pretty good. But I have no problem believing after seeing how it performs that it has about five watts of panels in it. So my conclusion is this power bank does impress me. It's actually pretty neat. Um, I'm definitely going to keep it, and it's going to serve me well. I have a project in mind for this power bank. I just haven't been able to get it on camera yet and I think it's going to become extremely handy. I don't get commissions for making this video or for sales. If you want to buy one of these power banks from Good AAA, the link is in the description. They have a storefront on Amazon where they list all their products, including their other power banks such as that one there. I will say if I had to compare these two, they're almost exactly the same size for the main unit itself. If you don't want to have extra solar panels and you don't want to have the extra thickness, this particular power bank is thinner and lighter, but it still has solar charging capabilities. For me, something with this many solar panels is going to have its uses, there's no doubt about it. Both of these have their use cases, depending on what's being done. Folks, I'd like to thank you for watching my video review of the Good AAA Solar Power Bank. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And thanks to Good AAA for sending this power bank for me to review.